it's your boy Bill. Um, I'm coming to give y'all the story today because I had just made one about uh, something that is about to release. But I was telling y'all about um, a situation where somebody went like door to door, like checking everybody rooms and stuff. And um, I didn't really go into it. You know what I'm saying? I told y'all I'd talk more on it in another video. And some of y'all be getting on me about saying, oh, I'm going to do another video about this and then never do it. So I humbly take consideration, take heed of that. And that's what I'm about to do. Before I do that, make sure you like this video, subscribe, comment. Um, I just finally got invited into the Facebook Reels program. Uh, for those of you who've been following me, I've been dropping Reels on all these sites for a long time, even when I was in prison. And I just got invited to it so uh, I could get paid from the real. Sit down. Sit. So I could get paid from the real. So if you got Facebook, man, follow me on Facebook. Follow me and uh, follow me and watch my reels, man. That's going to help me, you know, get a little money because you, you get paid through people watching it and people following you and stuff like that. So, yeah, if you can support me like that, just go watch my reels, like the video. My name is the same, Bill Feezy. And, uh, yeah, um, appreciate y'all who've been on my merch. Appreciate y'all on Patreon. And uh, it, just, it feel good to be out. I'm happy to be out. So let's do it. The very first time. Oh, hold up, 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 hold up. I forgot, my bad. We can't jump right into it yet because I went on my page and I told y'all I was going to randomly start giving people shout outs. So I got about five people. You know, it's a whole lot of y'all. So I just got to pick a few air here and there. So I got like five random people that I'm going to give some shout outs to today. So number one, big shout out to... Number one boss lady, hope you're having a blessed day. I appreciate you for being a, a loyal subscriber and part of the Feezy family. Forever Coco Chanel, I appreciate you for uh, supporting me on here. And you are a part of the Feezy family. Nay Dior, big shout out to Nay Dior, part of the Feezy family. And Erica Lejean, I appreciate you for being part of the Feezy family. Last but not least, my boy Eric Hall. Big shout out to my boy. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's do it. <clears throat> All right, so the very first time I ever experienced the whole thing where it's like basically like a room to room check. You know what I'm saying? Checking rooms. Okay, if you didn't catch the other one, what that means is you either got a person or a group of people that is uh, making a statement saying that they're about to go inside of every single cell in the dorm looking for something. Now, most of the time, it's when something done came up missing. That's really the only, okay, when something done came up missing or somebody can't find somebody and it's like the dorm is only so big, where is he at? That's a very bold thing to do because you got all these different people, all these different gangs in here. I have seen people doing room checks start a whole war because you got one dude like, man, you're not coming in here. You know what I'm saying? And this is my story on the first time I experienced it. And it went, it went way left. Okay. I had heard people say it before. It was a situation where something had came up missing. From my understanding, it was a serious issue though. It was a phone. Now, <clears throat> like I say, back then, everybody didn't just have a phone. They were super expensive. Everybody just didn't have money like that to buy a phone. You know what I'm saying? So it was a few people in there with phones, but them phones is your lifeline. In the prison, them phones is your lifeline. Like, every time I've had phones, it's like my time, it seemed like it went by quicker. Despite all the crazy violence and stuff that were going on in the dorm, it made the time go by quicker. You can talk to whoever you want. When you don't got a phone, you're just sitting there doing time. So people not trying to go without no phone, bro. The dude phone came up missing. Now, the dude was in the gang. He was a crip, okay? And at this time, it was a whole bunch of crips in there. I ain't gonna lie. It was, I was probably in the dorm, probably about 16, 17 crips. Now, something that I don't usually speak on, and I don't speak on certain things for certain reasons, but I'm a, you know, 
go into. Uh, I ran with the GDs in there, right? Okay, some of y'all already knew that, but I know it's a lot of y'all that didn't <clears throat> because I never really spoke on that. And I don't speak on certain stuff, like I said, for certain reasons. You see all the Crips huddling up. Now, I was outside the room leaning on the rail. I had seen them already. Now, I was about to go let my guys know, hey, bro, I don't know what the Crips got going on, but they all posted up there. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what you do. Whenever, like, you a part of something and you see the opposite group huddling up, you always go let your bros know because you never know what they might got going on. You know what I'm saying? They could have just got a call from another prison that a GD did something to a Crip, to a big homie. So now it could be a situation like the Crips got to go pop off on the GDs. But if you not on point, you could just, you know, you could be a dead man. So <clears throat> whenever I used to see people huddle up and stuff, I always go tell my guys, like, hey, bro, y'all be on point. I don't know what they got going on, but, you know, they all huddled up and stuff. Like, she, you know, just, just be ready just in case. It might not got nothing to do with us, though, but just in case. So, you know, they arguing amongst each other. Now I could, I could kind of see that it's something amongst them, but I'm still on point because it could be somebody saying, let's go pop them. And then the other one saying, no, we're not about to do that. They could be arguing about that. I don't know. So all my guys done pretty much came out. Now we not huddled up. So it don't look like, um, so, you know, so it don't look like we on point about something, but everybody came out the room. We kind of spread out two, three of us here, two, three over there, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. I'm leaning on the rail and one of the guys that I had just went and got, he came, stood next to me. Then my roommate came out the room and he stood on the other side. So we're not looking directly at them. You know, we kind of linked on the rail. Like we just looking straight and looking around, looking down, whatever, but we talking like, so bro, like, yeah, I don't know what they might got going on. They look, they do look kind of like they moving a little funny over there. So I'm like, yeah, you already know it. You know what I'm saying? Just got to be on point. They in front of like the corner room on the other end. Like I said, it's about 15, 16 of them, bro. They all got on shoes. It's not even cold. Some of them got on coat. So you know it's something up. So like six, seven, eight of them go in that one room. <clears throat> so now I'm thinking like, okay, they might be getting ready to, um, they might be getting ready to violate one of theirs, like beat them up or something. But it just don't make sense why everybody got on coats and shoes and stuff like that. If y'all just about to violate somebody, it don't take all that. Not for everybody to have on. So they go in the room, so they come out for a minute. So when they come back out the room, the dude who room me with, he go to scream. He said, one of y'all got my phone. Man, that's on, that's on the hood. That's on the set. He started screaming out whatever he was. He was like, that's on the hood. That's on the set. I kid one of y'all is in here. Man, my, don't come up. Man, that's on the hood. That's on the set. One of y'all gonna, I, I find out who got my, somebody gonna die today. Boy, I ain't playing like that. We ain't even playing no games like that. So one of the dudes pulled him in the room. Now, one of the dudes, you know, it's a couple of them that's real cool with people, no matter what group you is. So one of my guys was like, hey, I'm about to go holler at bro. One of the other crip dudes. So I'm like, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Just be careful. So he went over there, he talked to him for a minute, he came back over there to us. He was like, he said, bro, can't find their phone. His phone came up missing. You know, my logic is like this, bro. This is just how I feel about situations like that. Number one, everybody don't be in your room. It don't be nobody but your bros, your people, your crip brothers in your room. If your phone came up missing, and it's only your brothers that go in your room, your gang, your, your people that is the same part of what you is. Those are the only people going in your room. I'm sure those are the only people that know your hiding spot where you hide it at because those are the only people be in your room. Then it got to be one of them, bro. I, that's just how I feel about, about stuff. It got to be one of them because how the hell could it be somebody way over here that ain't never stepped a foot inside your room. Don't even know what the inside of your room look like. Don't even know how many pair of shoes you got in your room. So I'm like, why is you making statements like that to the whole dorm when all your guys right there in the corner? I mean, I know you don't just want to accuse your guys of it. Like, <clears throat> you know, one of y'all stole my stuff. But hey, listen, bro. If it's only 15 of y'all that, that has permission to come in and out my room, that, that be in here when I hide my phone, this, this, and that, and they come up missing. I know it can't be nobody that don't never be in my room or even be on this side of the dorm. I know it can't be. You know what I'm saying? So 
I instantly went to feeling like that. So, you know, I go to tell him, I got like, yeah, they say the phone came up missing. Shit, he, he know that's one of his folks got his phone. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. They was in the room. They went back in the room. They was in there for a minute. They came back out. Dude got the ratchet out. And he say, F that, F that. Man, I'm finna do a room to room check. I'm doing a room to room check. Y'all got me F'd up. Now, the other Crips go to arguing with him, trying to tell him you can't do that. You can't do that. Now, the thing is this. I feel like personally, you can do a room to room check. I have done it before. I have done it before. I might tell y'all about that in this video. I might make another one to tell y'all. But you can do a room to room check depending on what you're looking for, bro. I feel like something as this thin, that long, small as a phone, bro, it's going to be hard for you to go in somebody's room and find a phone because it's so many places I can hide it. You know what I'm saying? When you go looking in a, a room search, usually you you would look on the bed. Some people that shot out there, snatch the covers off the bed. You look under the bed. You look inside the locker box. You just look around the room. Man, I can hide a phone in so many places inside my room that you would look right over. So that's just, that, that's kind of crazy right there. You know what I'm saying? Now, like I said, I had heard of this before. I heard stories of it and I heard people saying, oh, I'm about to do a room check, but they never really did it. So this is my very first time actually really seeing a room check done with my own two eyes and how it caused a big commotion. So the other crib dude run up on him like that. He like, let me go. Let me go. You know what I'm saying? He pulling them like, let me go. So like two, three of the crib dudes, they all rush him. You know, they overpower him. Give me that. They snatched the ratchet out of his hand. So another one was like, man, I'm riding with bruh. So he went downstairs with bruh. They went to the very first room. Now we upstairs across from them. They upstairs too, but he started directly under him at the first room. Now you hear little slight arguments um with different people now by this point i forgot to tell y'all every every game done grouped up by this point now when he came out with the ratchet you know how i told y'all the gds wasn't all packed in together everybody was kind of separated when he came out with the ratchet everybody got together so now it's like but anything happened you know what i'm saying then you got the bloods they was to the right of us all the way in the corner because that was like a big homie room. All the way in the corner, probably about 13, 14 bloods. They all done grouped up right there. Then downstairs, to the left downstairs, you got all the Muslims, probably 17 Muslims. They all grouped up. And then the white boys, the ghost face, they uh, I think it was on like three, four of them in the dorm. They done huddled up down there on the big floor. The couple dudes go downstairs. They go in the first room. That dude, he was a civilian. He wasn't even part of nothing. They go search his room, no problem. That You know, they going room to room. Now, some of them guys, everybody, room ain't no civilian. Some of these is affiliated with all kind of stuff. But these people don't really care about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, they not really caring, like, uh, if somebody go in their room and stuff like that. So, I guess they just respect it. They've been locked up long enough. They understand, you know what I'm saying? They respect it. So, they go on room search, room search, room search. So I don't see them no more. So now they like under us. Now all the rest of the Crips, they still standing right there on the top. Then you probably had like five or six of them that like stood on the steps, but it was only them two going downstairs searching and stuff. So when they got down to the left, to the Muslims, it was a dude in the dorm. Um, like I said, I think they call him the, um, the, the they call him the Imam. And, um, I know in the in the Georgia prison system, because last time I said something about the Muslims, you know, everybody had something to say, like trying to correct me. And, and, and even one dude said, because I said Muslim instead of Muslim, talking about I got to unfollow you for that. Hey, listen, bro, man, watch out, bro. All the extra stuff. I'm not with all that. If you want to do that, do it. I don't give a damn. So. They go downstairs. Now, I asked the dude before, because I was cool with a dude. I was actually cool with the, um, um, um. Okay, I take that back. I just remember. The dude I'm talking about that was downstairs that I'm about to talk about right now, they call him the dorm Amir. That's what they call him. And the imam is the one that's like 
over the entire camp, over the entire prison. It don't matter. Listen, everybody that got something to say about, oh, no, the Muslims, they do it like this. Oh, no, that ain't how it go. Oh, no, that's not what this means. I'm not talking about wherever you at, what state you in. I'm talking about in the Georgia prison system, where I was just at for almost the last 10 years of my life. I know how it go in there. It don't matter what you talking about, how nothing go on the streets. I know how it go in there. You see what I'm saying? All right, let's do it. So I asked the dude before. I asked him, like, what does the, so you're the dorm Amir, what does that mean? And he told me that just means I'm the prayer leader for this dorm. Those words came out his mouth. And uh, he said the imam means the prayer leader for the whole prison, for the whole camp. All right, so let's do it. They get down there to the dude that they call the dorm Amir's room. He had an issue with them going to his room. You know, he got, he got a mule. He got a... You know, he got phones. He just got all kind of stuff going on. And he just like, bro, I don't want nobody in my room. So he talking to dude like, bro, I mean, y'all know me, bro. Y'all know I don't, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know it ain't, I ain't with no stealing. I don't let none of my brothers steal. If they steal and I find out, y'all know I'm going to deal with them. But, you know, I got just like I got respect for y'all, y'all got to have respect for me. Ain't nobody going to my room. You know what I'm saying? So you had some of the Muslims like, nah, I... No, I, you know, they call each other up and that means brother, allegedly. That's what another Muslim brother told me that that means, it just means brother. So he like, no, nah, just let them do it, bro. So we don't have no, uh, you know, no bad blood with nobody. You know, you ain't stole nothing. So the two Muslims go to going back and forth like, nah, bro, ain't nobody going to my room. You know what I'm saying? With the woo. So the dude tried to like walk in the Muslim dude room. So the Muslim dude stepped up. He was like, bro. I just told you. So now all the Crips that was just up here in the corner, they all started coming down the steps. Like they going over there to meet the Muslims. So it's more Muslims than it is Crip, but you know, sometimes them numbers don't mean nothing. But they was deeper. So now they in the standoff. They in the big standoff. So they kind of going back and forth. Dude talking about, man, every single room is getting searched, bro. Even a few of my guys' room had got searched, but you know, a couple of them just didn't care. So the guy that was standing right next to me, all right, my roommate was on this side. Dude was right here on this side. His room was next to us. He was like, Bill, how you feel about this? I was like, bro, to be honest, I ain't feeling it. Like, shit, I don't want nobody going to my room, folks. So he was like, yeah, I'm on the same type of time. So I asked my roommate, I'm like, bro, how you feel? He was like, really? I don't care, bro, but you know, I'm riding with you. If you don't want nobody in the room, that just is what it is. Ain't nobody going in the room. So, you know, in situations like that, bro, it's not only about you no more. You can't just think for you. You got to think for everybody. Because whenever a situation that I know could lead to something, I used to always think somebody could die today. And, and it might not be one of them. It might be one of us. It could be me. So I, that's the mindset I used to use to try to not let stuff go too far. But, you know, sometimes it just reach a level. It's, it's out of your control. So they down there arguing. They going back and forth. They done stood off. You got Muslims hollering. You got some of the Crips hollering. I, I'm thinking it's about to pop off for sure. You know what I'm saying? And um, next thing you know, they just bypassed the Muslim dude room. Went on to the next room. But the dude who phoned it was, you know, he's he's making out loud comments like, got me effed up. If it wasn't for bro, if bro ain't F with you, I'd have been popped. You know what I'm saying? So when he say stuff like that, you got some of the other Muslims like, well, what's up? What you mean you the Ben Pop? What's up? What you what, you know what I'm saying? Then they was ended up in a whole nother standoff. And then it died down again. Crip dude finished the rooms on the bottom range. He came upstairs. Now the time when he came upstairs is like they all came deep together. I think the reason they all came deep together like that because you got two big groups all huddled up upstairs. You know what I'm saying? We're not together. We right here, they all the way down there. But you got the GDs, which is a whole bunch of them. And you got a whole bunch of bloods down there. So, you know, they probably just was like, you know what? We just going to walk with these two from now on in case anybody else got an issue. So they come upstairs. They go to the room on this corner. And they walking this way. They coming this way. So when they got right to the room, directly next to my room, when, when two, three dudes, however many, went in there and started searching the room, you know, they looking at us, but, you know, people cool with each other, bro. It ain't no smoke or nothing, but it ain't no looking like, yeah, what? They just, you know, some people looking. And when I looked over at a dude, 
that I was cool with, his name was Jizzle. I just did like that. I did him like that. So he he started smiling. He was like, what's up, bro? I was like, bro, you know, I rock with you, but we ain't doing that one. So he was like, what you mean? Then my roommate was like, hell no, nah, but we ain't doing that one. You know what I'm saying? So you can see some of them over there doing little stuff like look fidgeting around. I already know they clutching for candy bars and stuff like that, but you know, I had mine on me. So um, when dude come out the room and they get ready to walk in this way, I, I step off the rail and I take like three, four steps back. So now my back is on my door. So I lean up on the door like this. So bro come, he walk in front of me. He like, CBL, bro, you already know. You know, we rock with you, bro. But, and I just told him, I was like, bro, we not doing that, bro. You not about to search through my room, bro. I'm a grown ass man. You know, I don't do no stealing. You know, bro right here don't do no stealing. You know, we don't even play games like that. I've never even been in your room and you know that. So anytime we ever did business, either it's been in my room, either it's been in my room or it's been out here in the day room. So that's just not something we about to start. We just not about to do that, bro. So dude, he like CBL, bro. Come on, bro. You know I rock with you, bro, but I got to go room to room. Now, you know, the whole thing I'm thinking in my head is like, bro, you saying you got to go room to room. It's mandatory. You got to go room to room. But you just skipped over a room down there. You know what I'm saying? Like situations like that, bro, makes me feel like, in a sense, like, do you have an image of yourself like some type of bully or something? Or do you have an image of me like some type of sucker? You know what I'm saying? Now, y'all know me. Y'all know me good enough. Y'all know I don't got no pride issues. I don't got no bit. I don't got no problem uh, putting my pride to the side, whatever the case is. But just in a situation like that, bro, don't uh, don't don't make me feel like you're trying to pick on me or something, or you just trying to like, you know what I'm saying? Like like I say, you just respected it downstairs, so respect it upstairs. It ain't like every single person doing it to you. It's two people, and these two people is two respectable people. You know we got business by ourselves. We don't do no stealing. The same way you respected it down there, I just feel like you're supposed to respect it up here too. So dude was like, uh, man, bro, I got to do room to room, bro. That's the only way it's going to go, bro. He started raising his voice and stuff. So I'm just cool. Now, I had my hands like this at first. Now, I put my hands down, you know what I'm saying, because I wanted closer to the candy bar because I'm paranoid, bro. You know, anything can happen in that. So at the same time, I ain't going to lie. At that very moment, I did kind of have, I don't want to say a complex, but seeing that it's a situation I never been through, I did kind of have something in my mind like, bro, you not searching my room, like like on something like, you ain't finna try me, you ain't searching my room, you know, in a sense, I think back then I was much younger than I am now, back then I felt like in a sense like, I'm kind of going out bad if I let him go in my room. But like I say, later on down the line, I learned and I understood better. You know what I'm saying? About situations like that. So I'm like, nah, bro. I'm like, bro, bottom line is I repeated pretty much the same thing I just told y'all about, bro. You know me. You know I don't steal. You know me and my guys ain't on nothing like that. So, you know, you just not finna do that, bro. You not finna do that. So, dude... Looked at the other dude. So the other dude, like, bro, you know CBL, like, you know what I'm saying, or stuff like that. So he like, man, he go to screaming. Now he's standing in front of me, bro. He like, man, I don't give up about none of that. So I kind of, I was leaning on the door. So I kind of come off the door and I curve a little bit. The reason I put my, like, body into a little curve like that is because what I learned just from being involved in physical altercations over the time is if I'm standing up directly in front of you like this, both of my feet like this, bro, you can just push me with the slightest push. I could fall or I could just, you know what I'm saying? Be stumbling back like that because I don't got no balance. I'm just standing flat like this and it's like I rock back like a rocking chair. So when you curve your stance or you standing like this, you can't just do me like that because I got my right behind my left and that's my balance right there to keep me up just in case you do something you know what i'm saying so i do that you know what i'm saying i kind of curve a little bit i don't get in full fighting stance but i curve a little bit just so if he try something real quick he can't knock me down or nothing like that he said he ain't going for that 
And, you know, he already let a downstairs slide. So when he say that, them dudes, like, go to arguing with him from upstairs. So now he go to arguing with, he go to arguing with the Muslims from over the rail. But they still standing right here. So it's like all the Crips right here, all the GDs right here. But then the Crip go to looking down the rail, arguing with the Muslims. And it's so dangerous, bro, because it's like, if I was trying to squirrel you, and I think I told y'all what that means, but if I don't, that just means sneak you, just catch you off guard. If I was trying to squirrel that dude, like you turned from me this way, linked over a rail and went to arguing with somebody, bro, I could have blindsided you. You wouldn't have never seen it coming, but I'm not that type of guy. So he go to arguing with the dude, whatever. So they walk past us and he like, all right, we're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see. He just keeps saying, we're going to see. But he walked past us already and started going into the next room. Man, dude got down there to the room where the Bloods was at and went to them arguing with them because they were feeling some type of way. So he eventually walked away from them. So he go, room, 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 back up till he get to this end. Still ain't found this phone. So they all go in the room. So one of the Blood dudes, hey, see Bill? So I look up. He going to say, F that talking about C Bill. That what I'm talking about. Like he about to go in somebody's room. Got us effed up, ain't it, C Bill? So I'm like, man, don't even, bro, I'm not even with that type of stuff. Like, don't make it seem like like we boasting about it. Cause I'm not with that. I'm not that type of person at all, bro. I'm going to stand firm on what I feel and what I believe in, bro. But I'm not bragging about nothing. I'm not boasting about nothing. And that's purposely one of the reasons why I don't too much talk about stories where I've had to put in work just because I don't want, you know, I don't want it to come off like, oh, I'm bragging, trying to make me sound gangster when I was in there. Or I don't want the younger guys that look up to me and that's accepting the message I'm putting out. I don't want them to be like, oh, yeah, boy, Bill said he did this or that. Or Bill said that or that. Yeah, that's cool. I don't want nobody to ever feel like that. So that's why a lot of times I just speak on the other things I've seen. You know what I'm saying? I might sprinkle a little something that I was personally involved in every now and then, but that's the reason I don't like to do it because people people don't understand how to watch a person's story. The younger people don't understand how to watch a story and just, you know, it, you know, just get understanding from their situation and without trying to think that that's cool. That's not cool. So then the blood dude say to the to the to the dude downstairs, he said, hey, oh, wrong with that? Trying to go in our room. He got us, ain't it, bro? So, dude, he don't entertain it either. He just, like, throw up the thumbs up or whatever. Bro, the dude comes back out the room, bro. Me and dude don't sound nothing alike. I totally didn't, you know what I'm saying? Dude engaged in all that, you know what I'm saying? When he said it to me, I was just like, uh, you know what I'm saying? I didn't even say nothing loud. I didn't respond in a way nobody, I just was like, you know what I'm saying? Dude comes back out the room talking about, what you talking about, CB? What you talking about? Now, when somebody has any form of aggression and they say, what you talking about? If you already don't know, I'm about to tell you, that means basically, let's get it. Now, that's a way of kind of asking you, let's get it. Like, do you want to get it? And at the same time, it's a kind of way of telling you, like, let's get it. I want to get it. Let's do it. So he comes out the room and he's walking. He said, what you talking about, CB? What you talking about? But he's kind of walking a little bit. He walking real slow, though. Now, a couple of his dudes done grabbed him by the arm like, man, you tripping. So he done snatched back like, nah. So he ended up stopping right there. But he on the other side of the rail. Like, we both on the top range, but I'm in the middle. He on that side. So he over there, he talking about, what you talking about? What you talking about? So honestly, I didn't even say nothing at first, bro. Because I just be feeling like stuff like that. Like I say, I'm just not really into, you know, certain stuff like, I'm not, I'm not really big on it, especially like yelling. You feel what I'm saying? We screaming across the dorm. I'm not with all that. So I eventually was like, what you mean? He was like, you out here talking about, yo, we, we, we just bucked on him. If he thought this was, what, what you mean? What you talking about? You had like, you just bucked on me or something. You had like, man, I, only reason I ain't run off in y'all room, cause my bros, so what you talking about? Now somebody would 
extreme pride issues would have just big debate jumped on it off the dribble. Oh, I'm talking about whatever you talking about. But I know what he just said. I didn't say that. It was the blood dude down here that said that. But I'm not about to say, that was the blood dude down there that said that. So I just was like, bro, I didn't say that. You know what I'm saying? So one of my guys was like, man, let's go down there, bro. We ain't finna be doing all this hollering, bro. So my roommate was like, nah, we don't need to do that. Because if we walk deep down there, then it's going to look like we coming to pop on them. And then they might pop on us as soon as we get down there. You know what I'm saying? So he like, so I just stay right there where I'm at. So I'm like, nah, I didn't say that. He told me, I just heard you say that. I just heard you say that. So I'm like, hey, bro, I'm a grown man. I'm not about to do no line and plan. I just told you I didn't say that. And hey, man, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? He go back in the room. About 10 seconds, literally, come straight back out the room. Come walking this way, walking real slow. You know what I'm saying? So at this point, it's like, damn. You know, I was saying a prayer in my head, bro. I prayed, I asked the most how to, you know, just be with me and be with him also. Like, you know, just that stuff that's on his mind, just clear his mind, you know. Just give him the uh, the feeling and the understanding to know to leave me alone and that, uh, you know, I didn't do that. I didn't say that, stuff like that. And, you know, when he was coming this way, you know, everybody stood up. We we pretty much like, shit, you know. So when he walking this way, you got to feel him like, hey, cuz, man, come back here, cuz. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. So he's still, walk he's still coming this way, but he walking real, real slow. But he's coming. All right, it's like this. The range is straight. It's a very straight range. But once you get to the end, it turns into a curve. So you can see the blood dudes over there tightening up, coming back out the room too. Because in order to get to where I'm at, he got to pass them. Because we in the middle, but they all the way on the corner. Now he had issues with both of us with the room thing. So it's like, you don't know who room he might who he might be trying to run up on. So the blood dude over there, they done tightened up. You know what I'm saying? So he come walking. He come around the curve. He don't say nothing to them. He coming this way. He come this way. So I turned to him. And dude that was on this side of me, he like, what's up, bro? So bro like, man, I'm just coming to talk to CBL, bro. So he like, shit, what's up? Talk to him. He like, man, I don't got to talk to him through you, bro. So, you know, slowly a few of them was walking down here. Eventually, like three of them got down here with him. So it was like four of them. The rest of them was still down there. So I'm like, bro, what's up, bro? So he talking about, bro, man, man, somebody got my phone, bro. And real talk, bro, I just don't appreciate how you just came out here and made that statement. Woo, 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 woo. So just shoot me a one, bro. We got the hit, bro. We got the hit because somebody got my phone. Then snatched his shirt off while he was talking. Threw it down over the range. He said, somebody got my phone. So when he threw his phone, I mean, his shirt over the range, all the other crip dudes walked over there. Every single one of them came walking over there. So now they like this, we like this. He like, um, yeah, we just got to shoot a one, bro, because you plan, you going to come out here and make this statement saying such and such, such and such. So I'm like, bro, I just told you I didn't say that. That was not me that said that. He going to ask me who said it. I'm like, bro, you know how chain gang go, bro. I'm not about to repeat nothing nobody said and tell you, oh, that was him over there that said that. So he was like, um, well, like I said, bro, like I said, bro, we just finna hit, we just finna shoot a one, woo, 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 woo. So, he like, what's up? We going to your room or my room? So, I was like, bro, listen. I don't want to fight you, bro. I don't got no issues with you. He like, nah, F that. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something about me real quick. I've always went by this motto. I'm not a rough dude. I'm not a tough dude. But if you put me in a rough or tough situation... I'm going to, after I try to humbly resolve it, I'm going to respond to it in a rough or tough manner. You see what I'm saying? I think that's fair. I'm not a rough dude. I'm not a tough dude. I'm going to try to resolve it humbly uh, without prejudice if you don't allow me to do that and you, you know, presenting a rough or tough situation to me, I'm going to have to respond to it in a rough or tough situation. So he like, your room or my room? What's up? So now he's getting a little more aggressive. So a few of them I'm like, hey, bro, the man just said he didn't want to fight you. He's like, no, I don't care nothing about that. I don't care nothing about that. So I hear my roommate say, you trying to pop. 
or you gonna shoot him one? You trying to pop or you gonna shoot him one? So he asked me like, do you just wanna bomb on all of them with the candy bars or you gonna go in there and fight them? So I'm like, nah, we ain't gotta do all that, just chill. So I opened my door. I opened the door to my room, I snatched my shirt off. You know, I skipped in the room because I didn't want to turn my back on him. You know what I'm saying? So I just kind of skipped in the room. And uh, <clears throat> I skipped in the room. And, bro, he came in there behind me. And he came in there. You know what I'm saying? I threw up my little guard. I'm all the way back against the wall. It was a trick that I learned in there where you go all the way to the back of the room to the vent. And I always try to make sure the first hit that I get off is me, like, I be squaring off with you. You ain't really, you know, you ain't looking at my feet or nothing. You looking up at me because everybody want to try to hit you in the face. So I bend my right knee and put it against the vent on the back of the wall. And then when you, you know, run up, when I see I got an opening, I kick off the vent. So it's like all my mic kicking off the solid vent. So when I hit you, it's going to be way harder than it would be if I just threw a hit at you. So um, that's what I did, you know what I'm saying? And we we was in there scrapping. We were doing what we do. And, uh, you know, it was over with. He went out the room, and he went out the room, bro. And I remember this very, very, very vividly. I came, I came out the room behind him, and he went to walking off. And one of the crip dudes that I was cool with, he said, they respect, bro. That respect, y'all did that like, man, like a man. Ain't nobody try to pull out no candy bar or nothing. That's respect. And I was shaking his hand, bro. When I did like this and was shaking his hand, all I heard was. So when I look over, you see one of the blood dudes kind of like doing like that. And then the dude that I just got to fighting with was like doing like that. So the man done came out the room from fighting me and then went down here and just stole off on one of the blood dudes. But the dude he stole off on was the dude that the main dude he was arguing with when he was trying to go in people's room. And, bro, when he stole off on him, bro, the other Crips, you know, was in the process of running over there before they could even get over there. The dude that was standing, like, right beside, kind of behind a little bit, but really, like, to the side of the blood dude that stole off on him, man. The blood dude, young dude, whipped out a big old long ratchet. And just went to hitting dude with it, bro. And it was it was just so crazy to, to see how quick stuff just flipped, bro. You know what I'm saying? This dude just in my face, like, bro, I respect you, bro. Y'all did it like a man. You know what I'm saying? Dude just went to hitting him with the candy bar. Next thing you know, all the Crips ran down there. Everybody just went to swinging, bro. Candy bars, locks. It was just a big war right then and there with the Bloods and the Crips. And the thing so crazy, you had a couple of Crips that once it happened, they took off running to their room, they locked the door. You had a couple of Bloods, took off running to their room, locked the door. Now, in prison with the gangs, it's going to be a few out of every group that's really not built for that and that is going to run and leave you out in that water. So that's another thing, bro. I be telling the young dudes all the time. Bro, you listen, bro. You can't get involved in this stuff, this gang stuff, Thinking, oh, yeah, bro, lawyer, bro, going to ride with me. Bro, when the situation get real, a person will leave you hanging, bro. Your life will be on the line. If, if, if you got to sit here and depend on dude to survive, you might die. Because a lot of them, you just don't know it because you ain't been in a situation with them yet. But a lot of them is going to run, bro. Not a lot of them, but I'm just saying it's some that's going to run and they're going to leave you hanging. So it was a few from each group, man. And I ain't even going to lie. I'm going to keep it all the way G with y'all. It was a few people. That was a part of my guys that I felt in my heart would run on us if something ever popped off for real. So, you know, a few of them took off running. It popped off right there, bro. People getting hit with the ratchets all in the face, head. Man, it was nasty, bro. And um, it probably went on for about, probably went on for about two minutes, bro. People... One dude got through over the top range, bro. So when they went to doing all that, you know, my guys went to separate. You know, they looking at everybody real quick, like, y'all straight, y'all straight. So they like, yeah. So they like, all right, come on, come on. So everybody go to their room and lock their door. All my guys go in their room and lock their door. Now, the reasoning for doing that is because this has nothing to do with us. This is not our beef. And we know the police about to come spray everybody that's outside the room. 
So whenever it ain't got nothing to do with a group, everybody else usually run and lock their door. So I looked down there to the Muslims, they was doing the same thing. Everybody was locking their door, just lead them out here by themselves. Next thing you know, police came out there. I mean, police came probably at the about, I say it went on about two minutes, bro. There was some people that were down bad in there, but real, real, real down bad. And um, police came, pepper sprayed all them. And, uh, you know, dorm was locked down for like three weeks. Police came back in, took everybody out the dorm that was involved in it that they know of. And then like another three or four days, they let us off lockdown. But, bro, that life ain't for nobody, bro. I promise you it ain't. You know, that was my first time ever being in a situation. Like I say, after that, I started looking at it different. As long as I know I ain't had no funny business going on, and they like, yo, we're going to do a wrong search. I let them search, and I don't give a damn, because I know you're not about to find nothing in that. But, uh, yeah, bro, I promise you, bro, y'all y'all don't want to be involved in that, bro. And then you got some guys out here on the street that's really not built for that prison, bro. They really not ready for nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, bro. Uh, I just hope this motivates somebody, brother, to to humble themselves and really take a look at their life and understand that they blessed, that they out, they still got their freedom or whatever, and they just don't do nothing crazy. So, BillsClothing.org for my merch. I'm about to put some new merch up there. Uh, Bill TV or Bill Feezy on Patreon. Um, Bill Feezy on Facebook, man. Go follow me, man. It's very important. Follow your boy and... Watch my reels, like, comment on them. Um, uh, TikTok, Bill underscore Feezy. Cash app, Tay Need Cash. T-A-E, Need Cash with two H's. And Instagram, Bill underscore Feezy. Or, yeah, Bill underscore Feezy. All right, man. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. I'm gone. <laughs>